and there's that kind of bill of Oh, yeah. No, this is just the water cup, so I can use it in all places. This is a special grown up cup. This is exactly it. <laughs> Makes me look more mature. I'll have to ask my brother to watch it. <laughs> so I'm just trying to go, okay, what are you going to What do you do? Because I'm trying to do an important thing to try and help us get it. Or a dim. Yeah, you can. Like, really? Here is the. Can we find out more about I I knew of them before they had that beer. <laughs> I go to Firestone. I have not been there. It must be true. Do you know that there is a friend of two meetings ago, which would be like way back in November or something, had that list that somebody went around and said, all the different issues? Do you remember? The phone list we ranked? Or a full set of everything. Yeah. I got one. Do we yeah. have it anywhere? Is it, can it be? Uh huh. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. That would be helpful because it, it will help. I think I got it. Um, Who did you get from that? I think he has it. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Like, oh, no, no, no. We were talking about something different. Can you get another one? <laughs> we need copies. I can make copies. We have two more. Do we need any copies? Do you want to get a, co get a copy? There's two left if anyone needs it. We're good. All right. Welcome to the State Requirements Local Ordinance Amendment Working Group. My name is Sarah. Most of you guys have seen me many times before. Hello, Casey. Okay. And we also have Kelly Overton, our new cannabis program manager here, who's participating at the working group moving forward. So with that, I will turn it over to Amanda for roll call. Andy. Andy Rawalski. Anira Gotcha. Casey O'Neill. Here. Simone Petrie. She's not here. Okay. <laughs> Karen Powell. Court Neely. Del Potter. Andrew Rowe. Frida Bersad. And McDonough. Janine Clint. Here. Kansas. Present. Jean Prakashi? Yes. Thank you. Jude Tillman? Yes. Julia Carrera? Yes. Karen Byers? Kim G. Kev G. Marvin? Here. Matthew Man Mendeker? Monique Ramirez? Here. Patrick Sellers? Hansbury? Vaughn Edwards? Present. Mark? Present. Susan Gibbons? Okay, and on to County, um, Kelly Overton? Here, hello. Kudrowski? Here. Uh, Nick Strickham? Barry Duquette? Here. And my, I am, I'm the Walter, um, Instead of Cassandra Borgner. Was there anyone who did not call? Okay. Jessica Chateau, SCJPTO. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Okay, so what I figure we would start with, we have our agenda, we have updates on the amendment process so we can go in what's recently happened with Rangeland, what is all at you, and micro business and give you a recap of each one of those. Then we'll go to the report out to transferability group, subgroup. Is there a person that's going to be speaking the presentation? All right, so then we'll Mo will be up and we'll go over the recommend the transferability report of um, Lucy Pana and kind of decide on next steps. Um, we'll do a quick recap of the letter that went out and probably most of you know, but we'll do that. Um, I don't really remember temporary permits for sunset zone, so we might have to open up that. I don't, don't really remember that from the last meeting. So we can do a recap on that and then we'll talk about next steps we are and what we're going to do next and then our future meeting date. So, uh, it's possible to add a uh, uh, potential amendment, a tiny amendment to the ordinance um, today or? So what the group did, and um, you can talk about this at a later date, is they created a list of all of their top priorities that they wanted to see changed, both in the local ordinance and in the, in the state ordinance. Then they ranked it to create their top five priorities for both the local and the state, and that's kind of what we've been working off of on. Transferability was at the top of the list. So yes, but not at this meeting. Okay. Um, and I think if we could get that, or if I could get that um, list of priorities when I go to the next advisory meeting, I can take that and make sure that those are covered. When is it? April. You know. So, what? Can you give a brief update on Rangeland? No, is my line? Okay. So we'll start with the update on Rangeland. I'm actually going to go print or have someone print off copies of the full list. Right back. Thanks. There's a lot going on. <laughs> Matt, how are you? So Rangeland was supposed to go on the 27th. I think it was then continued because of the lateness of the hour to the next meeting after that, <clears throat> at which it was approved by the board. In like one of those European travelogues, if it's Tuesday, this must be uh, France. So I'm getting get lost half the time with the different different versions. So Rangeland is waiting for it to be effective. Uh, the zoning ordinance change that's adopted once uh, with one reading. The next item that is on death for the board on Tuesday. Wait, so that would be that the, the second read was the 27th, or it was continued because we have to do it this next time? It was continued on Febru February 27th because it was supposed to go. That was continued to the next meeting in, in March, which is two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Got it. So 30 uh, days from the 16th. From the 13th. Yes. So that's <laughs> becoming effective. Then Williamson Act changes, highly driven by requests from Flocana. Those are going on Tuesday to the board. Uh, there we have one zoning ordinance change to the exception section in the cannabis facilities ordinance and a corollary change to the Williamson Act policies and procedures um, on, the, on the same day with, with proposed adoption both on 27th. Next up on last Thursday, planning to heard cannabis innovation ordinance changes. Cannabis facilities changes were not noticed properly, so those are being done at the next meeting on April 5th. Cannabis cultivation changes were generally approved of and moved on to the board. They recommended against certain changes that are on uh, noticing issues and also recommended additional review by the board of prior cultivation uh, issues for, ten for people who were tenants or owners but have changed sites, and it's thing that I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, I saw that. So there's a couple, those, both of those secondary changes uh, were once for the board to consider, not necessarily, uh, there's no specific changes that the Planning Commission drafted. 
And then facilities code changes will go to the commission on the 5th with probably the anticipated date in front of the board of April 27th. You know, um, I very well could be. That's the first Thursday in April. So that's when planning commission would be for that. And there is enough time between then and April 20th, if the board meets 27th. This is the fourth Tuesday? Yeah. Or the calendar? 24th. So the round could be from the 5th, April 5th, the planning commission to April 24th at the board. Are they going to work on the uh, TPZ bell? The changes. So that what that's all rolled into the cannabis cultivation stuff that was heard last Thursday is going to the board. Well, it's going to the board. Supervisors is to say, and then 30 days later. Well, okay. TPZFL was the initial draft of it of the uh, two planning commissions didn't have that in there. It was older direction we had to find. So. We then got we did a supplemental memorandum from 27, and those changes there were in report and recommendation. Uh, yes. We're going to have more separate amendments coming between February and April. So. In terms of a final effective date, that wouldn't be until May, when Alan, all those changes are effective. And what about the other kinds of changes throughout the ordinance, both the cultivation and the facilities, I guess you call it, um, that are outdated and uh, there's cruise stuff, there's Alma stuff, there's what the Ag Commissioner's going to do stuff, and now we have Kelly and the Ag Commissioners. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to be rehashed and redone, and isn't it going to be more productive if we do those things in concert? Some of them have been done in the last amendments that went to the Planning Commission, so medical uh, and adult use were put in together, and uh, some of the references to some of the laws, some of the technical um, references that I submitted them on for suggestions of technical changes were will be rolled into Tuesday's presentation to the Board of Supervisors, right? With the Tuesday's Williamson Act. Are we doing what just went to the Planning Commission also? No, that's April 10th. It's a closing period in the right. 10 days. Okay. So. I will partly answer your question in twofold. In terms of a document that's going to have all the changes, Muni Code, we all codify ordinances four times a year. Oh. So, you know, it's not like we make amendments and then all of them will be live on Muni Code. A lot of times they'll show up as PDFs so documents are separated because codification happens four times a year. So depending on when you adopt changes, there was a delay between it, it's county code. In terms of the board, I think ideally, yeah, we do want to do it in concert and try to coordinate as many amendments as we can at one time because it's easier on staff for sure. But there also is to a point when the board expects to see certain items, and those can also come out of concert depending on when the board wants to see something now and, turn, and what their expectation is for scheduling. So ideally, yes, staff wants to coordinate amendments as much as possible because the more we can do in one full swoop, the easier it will be, but sometimes doing a lot of things together, it will take a little bit more time in the upfront time to get a whole amendment package together. And sometimes that is not in concert which was with what the board expects. So I'll just, you know, we, but yes, we do want to do that. I mean, and given that explanation, I mean, I'm sure that there are some folks in this group who would be happy to start working on some of those other things that don't require why so much uh, backing and forcing and compromising and maybe even, you know, having to be flexible, but Yeah, and I would also suggest that we should really almost wait on some of the items that need to be changed in terms of state regulations until 
we really see some final regulations. Because we also don't want to go down the path where we change everything to match up with what we're seeing in state regs. Then the, then the recommendations come out from the committees and they go to the regulators who change it and then it goes back. But I think we can be proactive in making sure when we have these set of regulations that we do a big update and we know the final direction that state's going in. Did you do planning? Or no? Just get them? What's the way? So oh. The range line is done. We don't use that as being wrapped in um, changes. We, I'm going to take all changes to March 15th on the commission. That just didn't noticing the shoot took that out of uh, consideration. And uh, some micro businesses and all the facilities changes will be going next. That would have, and trust me, I want as few tracks as possible as well. This one, when we had to split facilities and cultivation, that made my mind kind of better. <laughs> so that's why I had so much difficulty just going over all the different dates. If we had more time, the issue is, like I said, more time to compile everything at once is what we have set out with. That's what we had tried to do for March 15th. We arranged land in advance because that was something the board gave us direction on end of last year. We did uh, William Smack change because that was relatively segregated for a change on its own. Everything we were trying to get done for March 15th. And so the everything else was stuff, everything we could reasonably get done with board direction. And I think there are probably still things I would be happy to, you know, to tinker with uh, what staff has been thinking about. We just didn't have the time for it. And how about the item um, that the board has referenced, but I haven't seen it included in other staff proposals, et cetera? The issue of allowing an opt out year, time off year for cultivators? Coming, we hit that was part of the supplemental memorandum that we did for last week in front of the Planning Commission. So okay. that's something then the Planning Commission accepted that recommendation. We just need to build that into the ordinance. Uh, but that direction was from September 12th of last year. And between the end of September and October, we were working a lot on the facilities ordinance and follow that. And then the fire is also diverted attention for October and November. So that's where bringing that back in, we and there are separate direction given for that item on the 12th as well. So they did the recommendation and that's action, and that's moved we'll have to incorporate that into the ordinance prior to the 10th. Hannah? Yeah, two things. One on, on that specific issue. One is that there is uh, potentially a difference in what I'm going to, for example, advocate with respect to that issue versus the narrow uh, applicability presented to the planning commission in terms of what zoning districts it, it can apply to that, that time off. Uh, but the other thing is it would be helpful, and I don't know where the appropriate place is to ask this, if since we know that the uh, or since it's given direction, we'll approve some kind of process for a time off. I'm wondering if we can mobilize the staff behind the scenes work that might have to get done to start coming up with whatever the preferred procedures are or forms or whatever might be. Obviously, it wouldn't get finalized until after the board um, approves it finally in an internal form, but if we can get it going, since it's now not going to be heard by the board until April 10th, and people really are uh, at this moment in time trying to figure out, do they have to keep going, do they not, and can they file for some form, it would be great if we can have that moving on the parallel track so it's ready when the ultimate ordinance is changed and effective. There's a, the honest answer is there's just a long, long line. But what you're speaking about is preferable that we're doing these things and being proactive. You know, we can we can do our best. Uh, with that. Give it a shot. Um, okay. So if you could just put it on your list as something to put in the hopper, that would be yeah. excellent. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So next we'll move. To, uh, unless there's any more questions about the updates. Um, I have an update. This is Susan and Paul checking in a little bit late. We've been listening 
um, the reception is not that great. Did we hear that, that micro business, particularly medical micro business, will be addressed uh, at a particular on a particular date? We've had a lot of questions about that. Okay. So the micro business is now in front of the planning commission on April fifth. Okay. And uh, date to the board of April twenty fourth. Moving on to the report out from the transferability Secretary. I will turn it over to you, Mo. Okay. Um, I just want to say, first off, that our group was not aware that we were needing to be reporting anything today. Um, and I just noticed it on the agenda last night and scrambled to contact everyone that I could remember that um, voted to be on the subcommittee, and I believe there were six members. There was one person outstanding that didn't get included on our email when we put it together within a matter of hours, and I believe it's Jude that has been on, the, on that. Uh, Transferability Working Group Subcommittee. Okay, there's the six people that were elected. Um, so we just kind of quickly put something together, but we're not like confident that this is what we want to fully bring to the board yet. So we wanted to just have a discussion about it um, and we can just read it, I guess. Um, we appreciate the intention of the Board of Supervisors transferability policy to protect our community from the green rush, selling and buying of properties in Mendocino County. However, there are a number of unintended negative consequences, some proposed solutions for the group to discuss. Number one, transferability is an issue that is affecting all existing cultivators because the lack of transferability is an obstacle to participation in the program. Farmers don't want to make large and huge, in some cases, investments into their properties to become compliant if in the long run there is no value to their investment if they decide to stop the business or retire. Any other business is allowed transferability. Number two, transferability is a board policy issue as stated by county council in our last working group. Because the existing regulation holds no legal bearing against the CEQA mandated negative declaration that the BOS has been under the impression of, this needs to be addressed now so more people have entry into the program. Number three, the current ordinance does allow for transferability of permits to the following, family member, spouse, and a trust if it was set up prior to January 1, 2016. Why not expand that allowable to non-blood relatives when 2020 rolls around? Number four, many farmers do not have the economic needs to afford with the permitting costs as they continue to mount. Selling their permit only and staying with the land is what many are wanting to do. If allowed, the economic collapse will be mitigated. Not all that would seek to transfer a permit will actually be selling their property as some board members fear. Number five, if transferability were allowed, a huge sell-off of land in Mendocino County can be avoided. Requiring a permit holder to maintain the permit for two years before allowing to transfer to a new owner could accomplish this. With 2020 opening up permits to new people, this would avoid foreclosures, increased property values, and in turn increased revenue to the county through increased property taxes. Number six, transferability of a permit should be treated like any other business transfer. If someone wants to sell their business to someone else, they should have the right to do so. A new applicant would still be required to go through the same application process um, with live scan and all that, and then also indicate their growing practices, et cetera. And seven, if one partner that had their name on the permit has now decided to bow out because of finances or other reasons, the remaining partners need a pathway to move forward. The provisions of transferability as it stands does not address this common circumstance and once again is an obstacle to participation in the cannabis program. By allowing the permit to transfer to business partners, we enhance program participation. So, and these are just the highlights. I mean, we could go even deeper into it, but you can see that there's a lot of reasons why transferability is a very important issue at the table, and it really needs to be addressed for a multitude of reasons. And I know that it seems the board seems really um, hesitant about this topic because they really are focusing on getting existing cultivators into the program, and they believe that, or some people believe that it's, this is a long-term issue, but we outlined very specifically that it does affect existing people right now. So, so I saw Jude's hand at first, okay. and then I think I saw Ron's and then Hannah's. Your hand was up, Ron, right? Yeah. Okay. Marvin's up to Hannah and Mark. Can you just give the succinct one-liner on why we don't have transferability 
<laughs> kind of a clarification on that. Yeah. But the, I think the clarify, to clarify that though, it's not that the business transferability is going to one of you, but this is really getting to transferability of the cultivations, the permit for the site. So I'm not sure when this is talking about transferring a, a, the permit to someone for a different piece of property. I'm not sure that's what the ordinance is thinking about. A different piece of property would need its own cultivation permit. Right. No, we're, anyway. No, we're talking about the same permit. Yeah. Different owner. Yeah. That's what we think you're talking about. We're to make sure that it is clear in here. Oh. That's Selling their permit and staying with the land is what people are, are want, want to do. Yeah, so like somebody, I had someone email me the other day and said, I want to pay, I wish we had transferability because I established my garden, I went for the permit, and now as he's going through this process, he's like, I can't afford it and I, I want to get out, and 65, I don't want to move, but I want to give my permit to somebody else to do it and put it in their name and have them do it. At that same location. That's what we do. I think it doesn't make it clear, clear that that's what it is. transferability of cultivation site because the ag permit is a yearly renewal permit, obviously yeah. the entire culture, but I would maybe clarify. Just yeah, clear a little. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is that agricultural permit is like one of those ministerial over like renewals every year. And what you're really talking about is like this site is viable moving forward. Right. Yeah, so someone that's not a prior cultivator. You can could transfer your cultivation site to a new owner or new leasee or whatever you. Right. So I would say yeah, transfer your cultivation site rather than your permit. Permit. So then my question is because regardless of who. Well, more confusing sort of thing. Well, what's the question? Those can go to anyone. You can transfer. That's the cultivation. You can transfer your cultivation to another person. I think the intent behind that was the green rush buying and selling that we tried to address in the 24 hours. It might have been two things, sequel and, oh, no, it's not involved. It isn't sequel. If anything, there are policy reasons as to, because sequel document did not depend yes, on transferability Marvin. for anything that, you know, to occur. There's no mitigation measure regarding transferability. So that wasn't baked into the sequel document. But I think the concern was, a I, and I can't, I can't explain it. I don't know how you can explain it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your answer. That is part of the I'm going to go back to what Julian said. Well, number three, for example, is a lawsuit waiting to happen because he transferred to a family member, a spouse, a or trust. Get the same sex. <laughs> yes, it's, it actually provides not uh, for domestic partners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the complete language, but yeah. you know, Condense. I think we can explain the, the their, their rationale. Yeah. So nobody it didn't come from staff. Let me just put it that way. Okay. It's a board decision. Explanation is exactly what Julia said. <laughs> board decision. And explain why the board decided to do what they did. Now, I the explanation was John McCallum. Yes. No. It was a policy decision. It was to protect the community from a green. And I to make sure that uh, new people didn't buy from the existing people so that we didn't have the new summit. What I like in here is that this can't start until, I mean, until 2020. I like that clause in there. I think that, you know, makes but it that, that doesn't address an important element, which is the forest land TPZ. If, if it's already mm. been previously uh, established, Rangeland, Forest Land, and TBZ, and it wants to con it wants to continue, but it's a different person. I think that that's another element that would not work with delaying uh, the 2020 thing. And so I think it needs to be separated out into two categories in terms of TBZ, Forest Land, and Rangeland. Is there a way? Because those go away if they're yeah. not continually uh, cultivated unless there's a process by which somebody's oh. so versus twenty. To go back on track, it's Juan <laughs> is next, then Marvin, <laughs> then Corinne, then 
I think one of the things that the board needs to go in here is really clear is the retirement of the garden and the cultivation site. Um, I don't think that they were considering the expense of that because if you put in all this infrastructure for a garden and you can transfer it, it has to all come out now. And you know, from a business point of view, it makes no sense to invest this money putting up a structure that you're going to have to take down. And so I think that that's really, you know, what happens if somebody goes bankrupt and they can't afford to do that? You know, it just makes a mess at that point they can't afford to, to continue it. It just cost one of my clients $25,000 to extinguish his card. To do what? Extinguish his card. It's, it's large expense. Yeah. So you're telling that to us? You tell each other that because yeah. I think this, that makes this is this is this is broader, yeah. And that's their fight. And what yeah. I imagine is the comments that you guys make, this subgroup, you guys can work on the next draft of this because ultimately this is what we'd like is something like a you know, technique recommendation version that then we can report out and they can have some real they can have some real decisions made. And, and this family, I mean that that is as to the board, that's just for lawyers to have work because there's always going to be a way around that you could find a lawyer that's going to work around that. So all we're doing is leaving it for people who have good attorneys to get you know, this as opposed to those who don't. <laughs> well, like I said, you can adopt an adult child and do that transfer. I mean, that's, that's legal according to the, way to do that. <laughs> but it, easy it's a way around it and, and somebody could do that. And why are we shutting out people who don't have those abilities? <laughs> I'm not. Marvin, you're asking this. <laughs> Marvin? I'm my points a little bit. Okay. First is that the, this the idea to just allow bond blood relatives. Those aren't the people with the extra hundred grand we need to help us do it necessarily. I wish was. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any uncle gone, but I can just call, hey, give me 100 grand, I'll put it in the permit. Here's the one I'm going to let do. And then, um, really, I mean, it is, this is just a magnet for lawsuits for the county. We should stress that out. Like, I have a minor in my business. I can sell my business, so I could be able to do already be transferable as well as a lot of people who have that. So it's just, it's, it is, it's, it's making it hard for people who don't have the money for lawyers and the way the smaller growers. And it's just, it's, a, it's somebody who's going to decide to the county and mm -hmm. the giant trouble that we don't have something about it. So I think when we're expressing that to John and the rest of the bill, we need to realize that we're very firm on this, which is why things like the non blood relatives are just not far enough. This is how it So how would you word it? Uh, well, I certainly wouldn't put non blood relatives. I'd say that we basically need to allow the people sell their people to be able to have to sell anybody. We have the same rights as, as, as all their business. Well, because I certainly agree with the idea of keeping away from the dreamless sale, but personally I'd rather it's the only choice for me was to have an investor who might get take over my property versus me just losing out on the whole thing. Well, I'd rather let those investors have the right that if I fail, well, here's 50 grand, I can make this work. If not, well, you know, this company is going to have a lot of permits. Lot of no, this requires you to extinguish. All right. That's the point. What Ron just said. It's eliminating the necessity to extinguish the use, and that's the problem. If I have a piece of property, I developed it. It's a beautiful cannabis and vegetable and fruit tree property. I should have any of those types of crops forbidden if I sell the property. I think that we've all made it clear from our suggestions in this group that there are plenty of conditions to put on a new permittee that will require that they are uh, just as regulated as the original one, and then that's the direction that I hope staff will be recommending because staff has already uh, a laundry list and then some of requirements for the parcel to qualify as a cultivation site and that the use should run with the land. So I'm going to say with visions of things that were in the ordinance that were policy decisions made by members of the Board of Supervisors, we don't work on projects unless we are given direct board authority and direction. So if the board says we want to 
the ordinance to allow adult use. We go back, we update the ordinance for adult use. If they're making specific policy decision as a board and inserting into an ordinance, we don't change that unless we're given direction. That's what's going to come out. That's what's going to come out of here. Recommendation is going to the we board. We will introduce the topic, and right. just like we've did before right. with other working groups, one or two of you will be the representation. You'll have a document like this, and I would suggest probably two of you. You can nominate whoever you want to nominate, but those will be the ones that are presenting to the board and saying, we've created these recommendations. These are the reasons why we feel it's very important. We would like you to direct staff to make amend changes. So this document we're going to work on is going to be a product of this working group, and one or two of you are going to represent that working group and present to the Board of Supervisors and say, we want to change. The key point being staff can make the recommendation. Working group can make the recommendation. We're just able to facilitate the process so that you have an avenue to go that. that already. I mean, one of the working groups, I don't know which working group it was, maybe a couple of them have already done that. Cycle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Our one way. So it was Stuart next, then we'll go to Hannah. Um, I remember having a discussion with John Miguel about this subject about a year and a half ago. And, and I just want to say, it's a private discussion, but I just want to say there's a public reason. I don't think there's an obstacle that's not really put out to the public. That's my opinion about that. I don't think I'm going to have to join that group, but I can send it to but I wanted to point out that I think the word transferability needs to be modified to flexibility of license. Um, and I want to point out that another point that I want to make here is there needs to be a clear differentiation between the vetting of the land, like a use permit on the land that says this land's been approved for this purpose, and the actual permit. And I know that, Matt, you explained it, that that's the way the ordinance is written, but I think it's written that way for whether to impede the future growth or whatever, but how do you go to a bank or an investment to get money to bring your property up to standards, to meet the standards, to meet the state guidelines, to build greenhouses when the bank says, well, what's the proof that you can have this permit if I loan you the money to do this? And there's nothing on the land. Everything has to do with someone who happens to grow before January 1st, 2016. There needs to be a change where the land itself gets an acknowledgement and then a permit can be placed on that land. No, this is completely competing economic growth, business plans. Um, that's part of my specialty in, in marketing. And this is a very, 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 one of the most, in my opinion, one of the most important issues in the entire county program. This is leading to Bowling balls, you know, bowling pins just knocking down one after the other. I personally have a pretty substantial facility. I can't make a business plan. I can't go to an investor and say, this permit's on the land. I'm doing all of the things. I just had five soils, five scientists at my property last month, a week ago. And I have to pay for this, but there's nothing on the land. It's just someone who can figure out there, there needs to be a major change to this, or this is going to lead to major problems. Anyway, and I think that it should be called flexibility of permit ownership. There should be ability to have partial transferability and have partners involved with it, mm -hmm. business relationship, just like any business to support substantial business development. Um, I, I just want to stress, this is a very important issue, and I'm disappointed that I wasn't included on the um, committee, even though I joined it and I recall very clearly. Okay, nothing happened until last night. We just, we just wanted to have something. <laughs> so um, my specific suggestions for the subcommittee are, number one, separate out the issue of prior cultivation because my recommendation to the planning commission, which they um, with to propose to the Board of Supervisors, is to allow an individual who can prove prior cultivation in Mendocino County to prove it regardless of then the property proving prior cultivation. So in other words, for renters and people who have had to move. And I think that this is a related topic because I think that one of the concerns that they were trying to address is not creating new inventory of 
properties, especially on certain zoning. And I think that if you deal with the prior cultivation issue by saying if people can prove prior cultivation and the land can prove prior cultivation, then those issues as to is it in phase one or is it in phase three okay. in 2020 can be addressed that way. Second, I believe that you should have a specific um, addressing of the TPZ forest land range land issue because I know that that was of utmost importance to some of the supervisors when crafting this policy. So I think that that should be addressed. Uh, third, I think that it would be excellent to make it clear when presenting to the Board of Supervisors that this is not a support issue because I think that some of them believe that it is. Uh, or I would suggest that you separate out number seven or maybe refine it a little bit more because I think that we have a legitimate um, question that doesn't have to be tied up with transferability that with current partners are coming up and needing to change the permit in their name, it isn't necessarily a transferability issue. And I, I get it that there might also be a transferability issue, but if we could refine it in some way because we really need to address this reconfiguring that's going on that doesn't have to do with actually transferring the permit where people have proof prior cultivation where the property is the same property, whatever. It's different businesses or different partnerships, whatever. Um, and then um, the other thing that I just want to say is that we have brought up this issue for many years, and especially um, I, have, I, I, I talked until I was blue in the face regarding the um, limitation of members, spouses, and it's not even family members, it's children, spouses, domestic partners, and a trust if it was set up prior to 2016. Um, and I think four times that it came up before the board, they declined to expand that list. And the reason why that I believe I, I understood at the time was they were mirroring the definition under the town of Mendocino change regarding could have a temporary accommodation. Um, business license, in other words, like bed and break, uh, not bed and break, Airbnb. No, Airbnb and stuff. And so I think that if we concentrate on the idea of changing the entire thing rather than narrowing to the change of the definition of what the list is, it might be more successful because they were mirroring this other language in another ordinance that has to do with not the same issue, but a kind of a Issue. And maybe I'm wrong on that, but that's just a suggestion. Um, and then finally, I believe um, that threatening litigation is not going to be an effective way to have um, very other important messages heard with respect to the economic impact and whatnot. And while, and I don't believe that it lawsuit would happen even if it's something that I feel strongly that should be changed because there is no right to this. This is a, um, a bargain that you make with the county. It's not an inherent right. And I don't know that the equal protection cause would really apply in this. But I well, the we, we can press and do it ourselves because a lot of people have actually mentioned Wanting to do that. I understand that, but I just don't know that that's a valid um, yeah. because, or it, it, I don't know that it's perfect for us to focus on that. Topic. But I understand. Because if you're black male deer, says. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. So how you how you frame the picture will determine how receptive how receptive these people are going to be. The antagonistic. You know. And have you all these points up? And I'm not sure everybody's got those. So we, I just this will be 
on record if you need to go back. So you're going to Ron and then Casey and then Mo. Okay. On Hannah's point of, of TPZ and force land, if we could, are you saying that that would come in in phase two? But are you saying that TPZ and force would be excluded? Or if it's currently there, it would continue? I, I guess all I'm suggesting, yes, my, my preference would be to address the fact that if, if the land is, has a perm now, okay. that it should be allowable for it to continue to with the two caveats. One is that unless you file whatever document you have to file, follow whatever process you have to file to take a year okay. off or whatever it is within one or within three or whatever the heck it is going to be, uh, and that the new person has to also themselves qualify right. as well, then phase one is applicable, but if and this is the tricky part, the, the intersection between phase one and rangeland forest land and PPZ versus phase two 2020, which is no proof of prior cultivation, but rangeland forest land and PPZ are supposed to go away. And I think you're going to have to address those, the intersection, which I know was a particular source of bug. Anything else on? Um, some kind of backup that if that is not acceptable, then maybe some type of review, you know, some type of minor review, because I know the environmental issue was concern of the expansion out, but I know a lot of uh, forest land and TPZ is not necessarily far out in those sense areas. Just kind of keep that in. My TPZ is like right next to the fruit. <laughs> um, what I was going to say is that I think once this is finalized, um, outreach is going to be extremely important. It takes three votes to change the policy, one-on-one um, -on -one constituent outreach to the, the individual supervisor I think is, is going to be absolutely crucial that, you know, there's a, there's a, a decent number of times which we go in and they're not all clear on what's going on. So the more that we're able to, to do that outreach beforehand, I think the more effective this, this the more likely we are to get, to, get this through. No? Um, yeah, I just want to say that, I mean, this list really was generated last night and it's just highlighting kind of the reasons why we're seeing they're not allowing it and then kind of backing it with why we should. And I think everything that Hannah's proposed makes a lot of sense. Um, and I would agree with pretty everything that you were talking about. Um, and I do think that part of the issue with the board was that when the Willis Environmental Group has gotten up to keep, it, keep saying that the intent was to phase out TPZ rangeland and forest land, and part of this transferability kind of locks that in so people can't come in later on. So, but we address that in another way too. I'm asking for public records right now just to see how many parcels in Mendocino County have a, applied for a permit, been approved, and also been, a, been denied that are on rangeland, TPZ, forest land, and all the zones. Because we're going to see that number and compare it to the CEQA document, we're going to see that it's probably a lot lower than we were thinking originally. So the intent, you know, to preserve those parcel types from having cultivation continue forward into the future, I think is irrelevant in some ways. And I think that's been an argument, though, on the opposite side of this, is that land needs to be preserved. They really speak heavily on that for cattle, for grazing, that marijuana or cannabis is not an appropriate crop to be cultivated on those parcel types because of sediment and species that could be endangered. You know, they come up with a lot of reasons um, and we need to counter it because I don't believe that that's very valid in a lot of ways. Um, and also the access to roads is another big reason too. They just think that cannabis should be cultivated in an more appropriate area, which to them is ag land. But we point out that there's not that much ag land even available in Mendocino County. And do we want to drive the cost of ag land up so that uh, food producers can't have access to that 
you can how the price of the parcel is going to skyrocket. I mean, that's something to consider. I mean, food production is extremely important. So I'm kind of going off on a few tangents, but. We're going to Julia, then to, we'll go back to you, Hannah, and then we'll go to Stuart, and then back to you. So um, on the blackout period between when we start taking, uh, stop taking uh, permits and 2020 starts, we had a nice discussion in the exceptions committee about addressing that and possibly changing it so that more people can come into the program once we make a program that's actually feasible for more people to come into. So I'm not as concerned about it. I think we're going to see something. I don't know, maybe staff or Kelly could speak to that more than in our discussion with um, the consultant. And then regarding, uh, I think that the blackout, we don't have a blackout period. Why? I don't understand why. Outreach, especially since we don't have a full grant, and it's, for some, it's a failed program. Outreach assignment. So, Casey, I appreciate that you keep bringing up that everybody needs to go and outreach to um, each of the individual um, uh, uh, supervisors, and I think that this group should assign people to do that so that it's actually happening. And I can't do that. I have been told I can't do that. I'm not going to do it. But you guys should do it, and you guys should pick people to do it, and you should do it, because that is the only way it's going to get through. This is a big contention to them. Hannah? Um, just back to what um, Bill said about the feasibility of different types of land and the appropriateness of use. I just wanted to explain one other component that maybe needs to be addressed, which is uh, the general plan, the, the update took 10 years. It was a very painful process. And um, TPZ and rangeland and forest land, there was an opportunity to recategorize some of those lands, and um, they are considered resource lands, and that has a particular meaning in state law. And so sometimes, not all the time, when references are made to appropriate use, that's what they're referring to. It's not necessarily a negative stigma about cannabis specifically, but it's about the need to stick the general plan, in my opinion, inappropriately sticking with old definitions as if the logging industry is going to come back or as if there's going to be that much cattle grazing and stuff like that, when that's what they did. And so because they did that, there is that issue to contend with. It's not something that I am really fully knowledgeable about, but I know that it's an issue and that has come up in the past. So it's another component that I think may need to be looked at more carefully when countering arguments that maybe Matt could help uh, fill us in on some of that <laughs> about the requirements of the general plan with respect to research plans and what maybe would be butting up against in terms of that when to change some of the abuse. I don't know. Just to respond, this is Matt. I have nothing to do. What you're saying sounds right. Right, that the general update creates me being in the county by a long shot. Okay. So I haven't looked into those issues or state law be saying about that at all. Okay. Yeah, you might want to, before I move over to Stewart, it's going to go Stewart and then Casey, then Anine, then Julia. What you might want to think about is phasing things in of like, you want to address these issues, what are the low hanging fruit they can address because general plan updates are. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, no, and I'm not even suggesting a general plan update. I'm just saying that <laughs> might be rationale that we have to be prepared to take. Yeah. And you might need a fine workaround. So exactly. You don't have to go down that path as the only path. I'm sure. I just wanted to also support what you were saying because I'm part of the marketing committee that just developed. And, uh, I'm really concerned about the development and this focus on ag land. Extremely they have incredibly strict pesticide and they have problems between people who are growing regular things and the neighbors growing on 
I have been trying to attend their meetings. There was discussion from them about a potential lawsuit over the change with the AP for RL. Um, I'd attend a meeting. There was lots of dialogue. They decided not to go forward with that. Um, it's not going to go away. There, we, you know, that, and that's one of the things that we're going to need to be very aware of, that there's going to be really strong pushback on this issue. And just like we need outreach to the supervisors, we're going to need to outreach to these other groups to be able to um, come to some sort of conclusion because if, if we're stacked up on one side and they're stacked up on the other, we're not going to get where we want to be. <laughs> Coalition Janine. And it's finding that we all want the same thing in the end is what Dr. Yeah. <laughs> I want to the issue on the plan. My study of the general plan articulates that field and rail crops are a plan to extend almost every agricultural, uh, pardon me, almost every agricultural yeah. in the county. Again, that last part. The drug crop. Uh -huh. There's a drug crop. Uh -huh. uh, and there's an issue that you can hear with regard to agricultural lands happening in Central California and, and drift, right? Because of the nature of the crop and, and how it's used. Um, we're better positioned in resource lands actually uh, to cultivate the crop. Um, consumed. Consumed in, in, that, in that regard. This is that the plan we have? Maybe we'll be using cycle I think it's because of the state requiring the testing of this product in the way it's consumed. Right. So that no other ag product really has right. these. And Salinas and Monterey are having problems with previous ag lands that have had pesticides used on them. Now those plants are cultivated to testing positive right. pesticides. Right. So, yeah, but who is. So, um, so the Mendocino Resource Conservation uh, District, is that it? Who, who, yeah, down here over on um, um, Jones. Yeah. So, is it, so it's conservation? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're the heaviest players along with uh, Willard's environment. But that manager is gone, and they are more cannabis friendly over there now. I'd be happy to go over there one day when I'm at my friend's house next door and chat with the new manager and staff. I mean, I work with that staff on a regular basis. I help them create that booklet, the whole bit, my pictures on the front, and see if we can't get them to kind of, they're starting to realize that maybe that what they did was a bit of a mistake for our community. I think we can get them, on, I actually think we can get them on. Yeah. I'd be happy to try, try that. Um, but the other guys, you know, with Casey attending, that's great. But yeah, Ellen is John McCallum likes them. You know, working hard at what she's working hard at. Now, Ellen has a long history of our county of being an active partner. Yes. So of course that's she has a lot of respect for yes. you. And then uh, Janine, and then we'll move over. Just Linda. I'm <laughs> mindful of the time and. Um, because there's something that I want to get back to in terms of something that was mentioned earlier in the meeting, which is micro business. But um, the, um, I really want to emphasize just what Julie was alluding to, and I think it's very when we have these sub group meetings like this, um, I don't call it flexibility and permit owner ownership subcommittee, um, that part of what comes out of it, aside from putting together very carefully constructed, uh, as you suggested, Sarah, and and uh, done uh, suggestions for the board of supervisors is that the, the left, that meetings with individual supervisors take place. We had a meeting with Dan Jury uh, not very long ago about, so it was actually about the coastal, uh, the coastal conundrum. But we 
our discussion was far ranging and we brought up the, the T word. And um, he seemed genuinely puzzled. And he didn't seem like he had a strong opinion about why it was been set in place. So I have a feeling that, you know, if we start to tackle one supervisor at a time, we'll whittle down to I think in, in all of these discussions, really articulating as well the requirements that are going on from the state resource agencies are above and beyond. Mm -hmm. And they and they cover the entire property. And it's, it's very, very well addressed environmentally. Over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Linda? Well, um, you know, I'm just going to go out on the skinny little branches here a little bit. Uh, just, you know, I know Ellen pretty well, and, and I know where people are coming from, you know, that are opposed to some rangeland, the uh, use for cannabis. And then I'm a grower, and so, you know, I'm see both sides of the thing and, and the problem is they you know they have a big fear of these big ranches that are mostly oak woodland and meadows being broken up into you know 40 acre parcels and lots more roads put in you know all of those kinds of things so you know I, I think most of the people in here probably also care about our environment and we have to keep that in mind when we're trying to negotiate through all of this because it, you know it's not like they're just out to get us. Um, there are good reasons for it. I, I don't know what the answer is, and uh, you know, luckily not on rangeland, but uh, you know, I just wanted to throw that out. But that actually can be turned into an idea in terms of conditions of not creating extensive new roads, making and also relating it back to the scale. So if the acreage of the property is this and we're only talking about this amount, which is something that we have to remind everybody of yes. all the time anyway, I think that your comments could be turned into other factors that are used to propose this and then also offer suggestions on how to refine it so that we're taking those issues into consideration. Yeah, I think their biggest fear is the breaking up of the law. But there is a, uh, a requirement that you can't, unless it, the parcel was created prior to 1116, uh, at least in phase one, that, that prevents against yeah. that and that was solely for that reason. So before we move on to the discussion, I want to recap. I got the notes from last meeting. So the ones we chose, or the ones that were self-selected to be on this committee, Janine, Monique, Corinne, Amira, Amira, Stewart, Jen, Kakachi, or the ones that were self-selected. Okay. So I thought I was on that. <laughs> no, you were on a you're on a different one. There was yeah, so these are the this is what I have from notes. So I don't mind having it you guys had another Sorry, yeah. Okay. Well add Julia. So this is a subcommittee. You guys work as a subcommittee so you do your own meetings and documents. So I recommend doing two things. Taking this and the notes from all of your suggestions and formatting it a little bit different, maybe taking a look at the memos we've done before to the board where we give a little like this kind of set the stage of a summary. Have hey, the definition of transferability at high okay. up front so everybody sees exactly what it's summary, what are we talking about, okay. then hit the different items you want to hit of like your reasoning of why they're changing, and then your recommended actions to so kind of lay it out in a really straightforward way, and then maybe simultaneously put together a strategy of how you want to approach it so if you have two members each to go talk to each board member, but maybe do that simultaneously. But if you kind of start working on this, then we can agendize it for the next meeting to go over a more by document or what are the recommendations you're going to Thank actually have. Now that we also have it sorted, who all... I think you could keep a good page. Yeah. 
Yeah. And this is just not no, no, a good start. Oh, it's a good start. And you know, well, if you're going to do it, use the code section too that you're talking about. Oh, yeah. the code okay. section. And I do believe that one of our biggest strategies is to get um, on the same page with the opposition. And we'll, we're going to find that we all want the same things. We want to preserve land and the environment. That's what we're all here for, is to preserve that heritage in Mendocino County. And I think having that dialogue and having that discussion, because fear is really just an idea of something that hasn't even happened yet. That's all fear is. And so if we can alleviate that fear by showing them, guess what, with regulation, all these things are at the table to make sure that the environment is protected with water, with fish and wildlife. And the county has restrictions on what you can do. We're not allowing crazy expansion. You have to prove prior cultivation. So I think by saying that to those groups, is really effective. And I think that should be one of our strategies as the subcommittee is reaching out to the organizations that are in opposition. Because if we present that to the board, guess what? Well, this environmental group is on our side. Like, two documents, you know? one for the outreach and one for the board. Okay. Real quickly on the same lines, there's something to address. A lot of people probably haven't gone through this actually, but they are being skipped wildlife and the water kind of all of it. They are being so tough on properties, especially the ones that are in the rain plan are more up on the mountain, more slope that aren't regular ag land. So that's something we can stress is that they really are being very tough and on those properties already. So if they can make it through all that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you really raise when you can actually make us through that, you are the rare. You are the um, anything else on this item? No, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the state law requires an environmental, it's strenuous for environmental review. So in the state law now. And I think that if you can go to these opposition groups, which I've taken on one myself, I hope someone else will take on some, uh, and, and stress that point, that it's in the law, and then go to that section and read it. It's pages. Yeah, unless you have, if you want to put in anything else. So I'll just add, can I just add one thing? So I, I think of it this way, 160 acres, because we're talking rangeland, and we're talking a quarter. <laughs> you guys need to do a visual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Map. Thank you. I mean, it's just one that you need to show. A big a map. Actually, maybe. Oh. Like, hey, you could even blow it up. It's your presentation. <laughs> if you want a giant map. Do it on a uh, power. <laughs> yeah, make sure you do it for the screen. But if one of you all have a range line, maybe you can use that one. Yeah, we can get one. I've got TPC. To be shown as how <laughs> not every tech team, 160, but it just, you know, it's in the picture, that's what it would look like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to the next one, we have the letter that went out. So, big thank you to all of you guys that scrambled last minute to create that letter to the Cannabis Advisory Committee, and all of that went out broken into sections with a cover letter for all of us. I also wanted to update you that we did, the county did adopt a letter of support for Assemblyman Woods Bill for Cannabis Events. Thank you. We also updated the cannabis section of our legislative platform and made sure we had some broad standing items that would allow counties to take swift action on regulatory changes. So that's included in the alleged platform that will be before the board the next coming meeting. So that's the update on that. I don't really remember what we talked about for temporary permits. Does anyone remember that? Yeah, so the, the, <laughs> the issue is that there's a lot of the people who are in Sunset who either can't meet the setbacks, are waiting for an overlay, et cetera. And so the concern was that they need to be able to get state licensure um, now. And so there was a question about temporary permits. Essentially, the route that the county is taking by sort of holding those permits in limbo is very important. Ellie and I talked a bit about this. Um, making sure that people who are in those sunset zones can stay in, li either get a temporary permit or stay in limbo so that they are eligible for the state while we sort out these other processes. Mm -hmm. That's something a bit to that, uh, tangentially. Um, extending the, uh, the deadline from June 30th until we get regulations in place, both on the local and the state level, would be important just for the sun zone for anybody who wants to try to enter into the new business. 
And that, is, that was part of the recommendations from the Planning Commission, but it's only focused on sunset. And so when it goes to the board, I think it's important that we make public comments supporting that be broadened out for everybody. And in conversations with various members, it seems like there is a certain amount of appetite for that. So I, I think with a little push, we could get there. Mm -hmm. And I think the consultant is on board with that too. If I'm, I, I don't think I'm not reaching and saying that. And, and for the sunset, yeah, uh, yeah. well, yeah. yeah. Can, That's all he's the focusing on is, is the opt-in, opt-out. Well, but there's also exceptions. There's and it's so the they, exceptions people. We had a discussion with him yesterday about the exceptions. A lot of the things we're taking care of, like are they kind of off his list? Because we're we're already dealing with it. Okay. So he there doesn't need he doesn't need to spend time on a lot of those issues when we're really taking it forward. Is there any kind of list that we have of processes that you've developed for some of those exceptions that we need to be able to communicate to people? So when it comes when the, when the report comes out, we're we're getting there. I mean, okay. It, and we've got the facilities, the facilities is going next. We've got the the exception to some setbacks going right. as part of the cultivation or event. So those are all in the work. Okay. But those, those were like the exception to setback was up on a very specific exception. We had one that, that we, that, well, anyway, I guess that's a whole other topic. So I'm going to finish. Uh, Sorry, that's okay, you guys. I don't mind. But I am going to finish. Uh, the exceptions group came up with a list that isn't exceptions that we thought needed to be addressed. And and I'm hoping that that guys are going over. He said he was going to go over it with staff. And we board. did do that. Okay, thank you. So um, and then with Paul saying, I agree. There should be no blackout. We, we can't afford a blackout for this program. It's just not feasible at this stage of the game. So I, I don't know how to address the board on that one, but. If we need to recoup the money, we need to have people come in. Yeah, exactly. So this group, when we do another letter to the board, that we could somehow include the recommendation if we're all in agreement that the blackout is boosting anyone. Well, if it's an agreement, we can tack when we when you go to the board for transferability, that can be tacked on as another item. Well, I think when the board establishes. <laughs> I uh, uh, established this, you know, extension of the deadline. They expected all the ordinances to be complete by then, and it's very apparent that they're not going to be. So that's items on this list. Um, going back to it's on the first Thursdays of every month. Do you guys want to meet in April? It is to we'll get back. Don't worry. Put your hands down. So, say that again, the first Thursday? We typically do them on the first Thursday of every month. April is fast approaching. So do you want to do it on April? Also a note, planning commission is that day. So, I, you know, we can meet at the first week in May. If you want to meet in April, it would probably be in the afternoon, but I'll tell you, I don't know if these are going to be available because it's a big, the big lots of things. My suggestion is we do them both on that day, and part of us are here and part of us are there. And well, we, we, we can schedule this in the afternoon, but in doing that, I just want you to know you might not have planning and county council here, but we can meet if you want to. So that's your option. So that's the first week in April or no? Yes. Yes? Why can't we meet the month, like the 14th? So for us, it's easy to have a standing schedule and we agree to a standing schedule before that we are going to do working groups the first Thursday of every month. The only reason that it didn't happen, there was a lot of things that were going on and, and that includes a lot of other state things that were happening with cannabis. But that was the agreed upon date that we will be doing working groups on, so, first Thursdays in the month. So I would ask for some flexibility because this is not a normal meeting day. So I think we should do something in the middle and that the staff should be a little more flexible. I think the building use requirements group, I think they established theirs for uh, April 2nd, if my memory serves me right. 
Thursday. Yes, it's always the first Thursday. The state had, I'm not even joking, like a gazillion meetings that all of us had to, had to, many of us had to be there for because it affects what we're doing. So that's an exception to the rule. But typically what's been agreed upon is the first Thursday of every month is the day we do working group. So I'm down like we want to say yes to April, so we will move forward. We'll try to get this group in the afternoon. The planning commissions are in the morning. We do not have all the staff there, but we can continue working. So with that, I saw a couple hands up. Those will be our final comments because we're out in the last 10 minutes. So I saw uh, Corinne, Jude, and Hannah. So who's sort of there? You have how we can do it together. publishes, you can review it, and your also task could be going to that meeting to provide comments and also reporting back at the next meeting. So will there be something that we can see about from the planning commission? So when, we, when do you guys, is it only two hours? Ten days, I think. Yeah, yep, so it might be out. So the, so the, pa the packet was posted. The packet, the packet was posted for last Thursday, but the agenda wasn't in the correct way. So okay, what meeting. matters is the agenda not the packet. Right. So if you go online and you can look, if you, if, uh, you can just okay, 2018 How do you know that? Because it's the, the other one was. That's all my life has been. Every time I'm trying to tell I'm like, it's just So that, if you look up that case number, it's OA 2018-0005. Oh, three is an OA, OA, this amendment. And if you go on the Planning Commission website, and for, for last meeting, um, we should pull it up. So there's probably those of us who can... That'll get you started. Who, who would be interested 
in being a part of, of a micro business subgroup. Okay, oh, you all I'm gonna count you guys as one person. <laughs> we can have like ten people on a subgroup. You know, Say like Miss Indonesia. We have half men and half women. Put a hands up. One, two, three, four, five would make guys fall six. So that's perfect. So we have Corey, Jude, Stuart, Marvin, Megan? Yes. So I have volunteered Stuart Marcus, Paul Hansberry, Susan Piven, Judy Goldman, Marvin Levin, Egan Henley, and Corinne Powell. What about Paul? I got you. Oh, yeah. So you guys are going to review this from the Planning Commission, and you guys will be the group engaging okay. on object, and we'll expect a report out on Thursday. It should all be at that meeting, so. And we start an email chain. Um, before You'll have to. His email on that. Anything else? Anything different than the county perspective so far in micro business? I don't remember. No, I don't even tell you what's on. Yeah, the packet's the out. The pack yeah, the packet's out. out. That's, that's all we got. Is that's what we have at time. It's a work in progress. We know that. And there was, there was one, one thing. There's one thing to flag specifically is that there was recommendation um, in that packet to to move to micro business all required on one premises and that is in line with current state but state recognizes that, that needs to be changed it's going to be changed so we need the county not to go in that direction um, at this yeah. I would bring that up to the planning commission because maybe we can I don't know something that. We sent it in in comments for the last meeting, even though Maybe it's there's off the agenda. Maybe there's some follow up for sure. I, I submitted a document to the state, the advisory committee, the Laurie to certain and to the board, and uh, Mary Lynn from planning, and I'll disperse that to the members of the subgroup. Okay. <laughs> we, did, we didn't understand what you said, Paul, but go ahead and do what you said you're going to do. So, have any other comments on the items on the agenda? Then we'll we'll have a few minutes. I just have a, another issue that I'd like to out there that was not on the agenda. Okay. But it's just about getting procedures in place for uh, extinguishing transfer. There's been a lot of confusion about some of what's required, and I I know that this is like added to the list of things that have to be done, but there are many people who are trying to sort out what they're supposed to do. Can that be part of this? No. No, 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 no. no. How, so if that's an item con of concern, how about we agendize it, and then you can come back there to talk to it at the next one? I, I think it's just a staff issue that they have to work through. I, I'm not sure. I, I think that's not a bad idea for, for ag staff to feel to start it. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, so it's not a controversial issue. Right. It's not a request to change something. It's just there needs to be. This is how you, what you need to do, and this is how to do it. Okay. And that's all. And it certainly, I'm, I'm totally happy to talk to anybody about it. But I think it has to come from internal staff. Okay. Let's have a an offline combo with Ag and, and you. Last the comic issue is um, in order for us to, as uh, Casey suggested, send a thread on the subcommittee's first meeting uh, to everybody else to see that. We need the email list if everybody wants I believe this one had agreed the draft email list, right? Yes. He will resend out the list Yay. since I know. Not to mention that you guys all agreed to um, share it. Your past email will have CC, so you will have actually access to Everyone. But how about we send out in a document? Yeah, because yeah. you don't know the yeah. name. Okay, we'll send yeah. out into a document form. Even then for the um, uh, transfer. We're going to we're gonna send out the master list to you guys. So you have everyone's emails. So I'd love for you to share your emails. And then the people in the subgroups can figure it out. I would say select a team leader. Either. So with that, I will give our last few minutes to be. Yes.
to introduce yourself. <laughs> what time is our next meeting on I don't know yet, but we will do it in the afternoon since the planning commission's in the morning. So just you know, we'll after lunch. I've met probably the majority of you. I am Kelly Overton. I'm the cannabis program manager for Mendocino County. I have been, this is my third week on the gym, I think, middle of my third week. So I can answer some simple questions if you like about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, if that's that's it. great. An update, we are look at processes and what that means in the simplest sense is finding out how much work we have to do and we have thousands of hours of work. Okay. And we look at how many staff people we have to do that and we take away the time they need for meetings and lunch and this, that and the other and we figure out how many hours a week of staff time we have and then we look at how many weeks or even months time in the work we are and we're trying to put in systems to speed things up. So when you hear an answer like, I need to put something in the hopper, it might be that, you know, we have 2.5 admin people right now, you know, and that's 100 hours a week and you take away what they're really doing and we have 25 hours a week. But we might also have literally 20 hours of scanning to do from months ago and everything on top of that. So, I mean, it, it helps, I think, to just get this simple with it and explain to you that it, it isn't uh, not understanding priorities and it isn't not caring about what you care about. We simply are so far behind in work. And that when you make it a math problem, here's how many people work and here's how many hours they work and here's how much hours, and you you got to take into account we're still people coming up when we're doing permits and we're meeting people. So it is a, it's going to be a challenging process. Obviously, when I give you an example like that, the solution is, well, you look at your staff. How are people working better? Do you add staff? Do you shift staff from here to there? Do want so this is this is what we're doing. A lot of it is looking through, and I think Kelly is really doing a good job of areas that we can save time, areas where with the right tools, the right training, reworking how we do things, we can work faster, we can work better, we can work smarter. And I think that's the goal, is to work smart with what we have so we can get these permits out. We want to issue them. And, and, we're, and, I would, and we're making progress. So yeah. our goal is really to make up a lot of the time that was not intentional, but I think there just needs to, we we're really working on the organization, the structure, the process so that we can work smart. I think it would be great if we could at the next board meeting and kind of update use a realistic picture to help advocate for potentially extending the deadline for phase one because it's not just about the finalizing of permits, it's about the internal policies and how things are rolling out that, that affect it on the ground and the functioning. And Totally, it's understandable. It, it, it's a math problem, like you said, mm -hmm. but right. then it does have an impact besides just the processing of permits. On the other hand, of how answers to questions that never get answered and that haven't been the June 30th, 200 people in the queue. Right. <laughs> okay. And again, we understand, like we're able to, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make a plan to move forward sure. as we take this from behind. Sure. So Because again, you can't just go back there and start shoveling because it just piles up in front of you. Sure. So all of that has been taken into account. The only way to come back from something like this is in this day and age is one, to use technology a lot better mm -hmm. because it's probably our, our biggest cost of time and the biggest waste of time to use that word is we have not been efficient in using technology. And, you know, there was one example where somebody was doing something that took 15 minutes, and if there's 800 permits, that's 200 hours. It should take about 15 seconds. So then we're able to change it to that. So 200 hours is five weeks of a 40-hour person working. So, I mean, we're looking, and this is the only way to catch up because what happens if you just work like a busy bee, and in the end you fall down or stuff happens or you're not there to, to you know, kind of think forward. 
Sure. So we're we're literally doing we're doing it. I don't doubt that. I guess what I'm saying is on the policy decision mm -hmm. of obviously there are so many different issues that the departments have to come up with their own procedures of of oh gee, gee mm -hmm. this issue keeps coming up now we need to come up with a policy Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. Right. And that that stuff has been unfortunately understandably has to be put off to make those decisions and those processes. Mm -hmm. And so what you're talking about is processes of administrative staff and stuff like that. Like, and yeah. I'm talking about policy processes mm -hmm. and um, conveying to the board realistically, in an optimistic way, mm -hmm. but realistically, that that has had an impact on the on the ground implementation of the mm -hmm. ordinance, so that it justifies requesting mm -hmm. pushing out the deadline. I think that that point can be made, and I also think as we figure out these efficiencies and we work smarter, then we free up time to raise policies and procedures, but I think that is a valid point to tell that to the board to give us a little bit more time. And, you know, it does no one, i much rather have hundreds of applications trickle in over a couple of months than all of them on one day. And, <laughs> and to be, Could be happen. traditionally we have, when there's a deadline, we <laughs> party at the county. Sure. Yep. <laughs> and just to add that, I think the board already, at least in private conversations with me, does understand that this is, has an effect more so than in just the busy work. And, and they understand that and they were able to hear that. I just wanted to thank you for introducing yourself. I'm glad to finally meet you. It's a really good thing about you. Gosh, thank and you. I really nice. appreciate what you're saying, Sarah, about looking smart and all of that. And I just have one question for all of you. We take a lunch. <laughs> we don't. I'm not at our desk. Sarah doesn't. I don't whatever we got. Yeah. Yeah. Sit yeah. so, Thank you, Kelly. I think it's helpful for everyone to understand what's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank God you've got the rules. Thank God you've got the rules.